for the guys that haven't been here last year. Uh, just tonight that we want to celebrate together the accomplishments that we had uh, as a team. Uh, highlight individual players, yes, but most of all, uh, relive some of the, the moments that we had together. Um, so we're going to uh, spend a little bit of time to do that. Um, again, we appreciate you guys uh, looking, uh, looking good for the most part, you know. Uh, we should have brought an award for the best dress, but we know who would win that every time, so uh, it's, it's too easy. Um, but yeah, uh, excited to relive some of these moments with you guys. Um, we're going to bring each of you up uh, throughout the time uh, and recognize each of you. Um, I, would, I would say at that moment, uh, don't feel like you have to speak. We will uh, give some awards as well, uh, awards that you guys voted on, uh, many of them. Uh, so if you do receive an award, uh, you must practice your, your public speaking skills uh, and be able to say something. Uh, for us, it's important. Uh, to have this uh, be kind of about you guys, um, uh, a little bit of, of your kind of um, your voices and how we recount the season. So again, this is a little bit of, of how we go through everything. Um, uh, Coach Haas here uh, will, will help out. Uh, unfortunately, CJ uh, is sick today. Uh, he is very disappointed that he can't be with, with us uh, here. Uh, last year, uh, he was here and was the star of the show, if you guys remember that, but, uh, uh, but we will miss him tonight for sure. Um, so yeah, uh, excited for that. Um, so uh, for me, uh, we'll talk a little bit as we start with the season. So uh, there are so many things about the season that we could speak about uh, that are uh, huge accomplishments. Um, I think on paper, there is no one that can deny this is the most successful on-field season that the program has ever had. Uh, you can see we uh, had the most wins in program history. Uh, we had the best goal difference in program history, which also uh, was the most goals scored. So we scored 45, I believe, uh, and the next most was 42. Uh, we also conceded the least goals in program history. So by all of the metrics, uh, you can say we had uh, a very good season. Uh, however, uh, as we talked a lot in, as we've had individual meetings, a word that comes up a lot is disappointment. Disappointment in, in some of those fine margins that we didn't get to. Um, but uh, ultimately, uh, I think as we talk together about a group, as a group, we have to be very happy with what we accomplished. Uh, coming into the season, uh, for myself and Coach Osler, uh, what we wanted to do is we wanted to change the way that we played. Uh, the first season that I was here, I think that happened a little bit, but what I think happened more was we changed the culture and, and the way we, we interact, the way we carry ourselves, the way we arrive to training, all of this. Uh, this year uh, was very much about the way we change the game model, the way we play on the field, the way we um, try to attack the game. Um, and for me, uh, that was something that we accomplished throughout the season. Uh, if you look on huddle, uh, if any of you use that, uh, there are statistics that are very important. Uh, in every game, uh, so they total the games together, uh, we have 65% of the possession throughout the season. Uh, even in the difficult games, we had control for large spells. And I think as we start to change the way the program is, is gone about, um, the biggest thing is changing the game model and the way that we play. Um, so uh, that was big for us. Um, for me, what we speak a lot about as well uh, is we want to have uh, amazing moments together as a team. I think each of you, maybe it's a little bit different, but we can look back on some of the moments and those are memories that will last for a, for a very long time. Uh, I think about uh, a lot of these memories. I think about the North Central game at home. I think about uh, the Faith game at home. I think about the regional final. These are things that will live in our memory for a very, very long time. For many of you, uh, it will be a different moment or a different game, uh, but these are something that will be shared and we won't be able to take away. And so, uh, again, we want to celebrate that tonight, okay? Uh, again, uh, we will uh, kind of bring everybody up and acknowledge them, uh, but for me, we must start with the staff. So, uh, first of all, Mr. Alex Hostler, okay? <clears throat> All 
All right, so as, as, we've, uh, as I've said to him personally, but I want to acknowledge in front of you, uh, bringing, bringing Alex has, has brought the legitimacy and the professionalism of the program to a new level. Uh, he brings a level of expertise uh, on the field where we can have a lot of success in, uh, you saw in the training session, splitting into two groups. Uh, I have no doubts about his ability to uh, run and be a second part of uh, my mind as we start to build the game model. So he did an amazing job of this. Uh, I also know that he does a great job to relate to you guys. Um, I think every player might have a different memory with uh, Haas. Uh, so maybe that's uh, getting destroyed in the van rides uh, to away games. Uh, there are many, many things that you could say about Coach Hostler, but uh, one of them is that uh, he invests and relates really well to, to each of the players, and I appreciate that. Uh, and the last thing is he brings a professionalism and a drive to get better. Um, I have that drive, of course, um, and I think we share that. Uh, but to have somebody in the trenches uh, doing the exact same thing in the office, making recruiting calls all the time, uh, doing this is a huge, huge asset, not only to me, but to, to each of you. So uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Hostler. Here you go. All right, uh, next we have, uh, we have CJ. Uh, of course, he is not here, uh, but I want to speak about him as well. Uh, what a photo, by the way, huh? Um, so uh, CJ, of course, as you know, was a player and a captain last season. Uh, he is a guy that has exemplary character and put everything into the program as a player. Uh, and we're so pleased that he was able to come back and do the same as a coach. Uh, for me, CJ had a really good development as a coach, and I think you saw that through the season. Uh, there's always a transition when you were a player first to become a coach. Uh, and I think uh, thanks to you guys uh, in one soccer tennis match one day, I think uh, some of you remember, uh, that caused him to snap a little bit. And I think that's a good thing because uh, from then on, he was there and he was putting you in your place every time. Um, so I appreciate uh, everything that he brings that, he, that we knew he would bring. Uh, but then I think through the season, he developed really well to uh, have that authoritative uh, side to him as well. Um, so again, we're super grateful for CJ, um, everything that he brought to the program. Again, uh, we, will, uh, we will speak to him more when he's here in person. So well done to CJ. Yeah. All right. Uh, the next is, okay, the best photo you will see all night, uh, Grant. Uh, so Grant is not here tonight either. Uh, he may be dropping by uh, at the end. Uh, but for me, it was never the plan to bring this guy on, on staff. I mean, look at him. Uh, but uh, he kept hanging around, kept hanging around. And uh, for me, he brought a lot to the staff. Uh, he is uniquely positioned, as many of you have, have, have known, uh, to bring a big level of expertise to the physical side of the game. Uh, what he does with track is adjacent to what we're trying to do as far as the physical demands of, of the game. Um, and so as we had more discussions in the office, uh, we said, well, this guy actually has something to say. Um, so throughout the season, we tried to formalize it a little bit more um, and bring him out. Of course, it was, it was great for him to be around, especially in the second half of the season. I know he enjoyed uh, being with you guys. Uh, similar to Haas, uh, the guys that I want to have around, and CJ, of course, uh, are guys that bring something uh, relationally to the team. And I think he did that a, a good job. I know he made uh, close bonds with many of you, including Leonardo. Um, and, uh, and uh, you know, uh, it was great to have him around. So uh, thank you to Grant. <laughs> All right, last and definitely not least, we couldn't get a good photo of him. Uh, but, Joao, if you want to come up. Come on, Joao. <laughs> All right, thank you. Here you go. Um, so, listen, uh, you guys should each, at some point, like take Joao out to a steak dinner or something because uh, what the gift he gives you uh, with the videos, with the photos, everything is, is, is cool now, right? Uh, but I think about as a player, uh, man, if I had those videos 
um, to show my wife, my kids, everything like that. Well, one, she wouldn't be able to fact check how good I say I actually am. Uh, but two, it's something that will live forever with you. Um, it's something you will always have as a gift that, you know, again, the value as being a, a bit away from it is so, so high. Um, so I hope you guys appreciate that. Um, he came to me with this idea of this project in the summer, and I thought, wow, this is very, very ambitious. Um, it's a huge project to undertake, and I thought, you know, he would produce some videos and maybe do some other things, but uh, to be able to do that for an entire season is so impressive, so impressive. All while doing school like you guys, all while working probably more hours than, than most of you. Um, it shows the dedication and the character that he has. Um, and you can see from the videos, the photos, the talent that is there as well. So um, again, we want to acknowledge him. The gift that he gives you will, will last you for a lifetime. So thank you as well. All right, uh, so now uh, we go to the players. We will introduce you all in uh, number order, okay? Uh, so uh, from one to 99. Uh, so uh, yeah, uh, this is a, a nice time for us to be able to, to recognize each of you guys. So um, yeah, the first one, of course, Mr. Leonardo Roque. All right, uh, so we have, a, we have a gift for you. Uh, you've never seen these before, but uh, you know, something to keep you warm so you can stay up here. Uh, so Leo, uh, again, uh, for us, a very important player. Um, uh, it's good to see that his efforts have been recognized um, during the season, of course, with the NCCA Tournament Team Award. Uh, additionally, Leo has uh, set two program records. Um, we hope there are ones that uh, you will break soon, you know, but uh, uh, two records nonetheless. So five clean sheets. So again, uh, I will cater to um, uh, people that aren't as, as familiar. So clean sheet means uh, going 90 minutes without conceding a goal. Uh, five of those in this time. And then 1.43 goals against average, which is uh, program record. So Leo will be up online. His name will be uh, up in the uh, record books. Uh, to be able to see that. So um, for me, it's a good reward for, um, uh, for the work that he's put in uh, to be able to do this. Uh, of course, these are team awards, but uh, again, he will be recognized with this. So uh, Leo, uh, very good season. Um, I, I could tell many, many stories about you, but I don't want to embarrass you too much. <laughs> so uh, well done. Congratulations. <laughs> All right, next up for us tonight is our center back number two, Angel Salinas. Round of applause. What? Uh. <laughs> First of all, his award isn't up there, but it should be. But um, record set for most hats sold in a calendar <laughs> yes. year. Easily yes. Easily taken by Angel. Uh, many things I appreciate about Angel. One, his willingness to learn. Um, lots of times, actually, if not all the time, I was in charge of the bu building activities and training. Angel always had a question to make himself better, want to understand the concepts more, wanted to make sure that he was fulfilling his role to the best of his ability at the time. The second thing I appreciate him is also his ability to relate, uh, but also throw a bit of banter around. Angel has this ability to play all sides of every team at any time. Sometimes, literally, his own fandom is all teams at any time. <laughs> but what I mean by this is if somebody is getting harassed or um, needs, a, needs an ally, um, Angel is finding a way, other than if it's Isaac, to, uh, <laughs> to come alongside and, and, and give a little bit of defense to him as well. Um, always appreciate Angel and the role that he has for the team and excited of what is um, ahead of him in the future. So thank you, sir. <laughs> Be good. All right, uh, next, Mr. Ethan Medina, welcome. You like it, come on now, come on now. It's the stash. 
Um, so uh, a number of things we could say about Ethan. Uh, most of all, uh, he is five, five and zero against his brother. So congratulations on that uh, in his college career, little bro. Um, but Ethan had another really good season uh, for us in the midfield. He was pivotal. Um, again, a little bit different position, but uh, to be in front of the center backs and win everything there, help us build the play. So he did a really nice job with this. Um, one story about Ethan. So uh, early in the season, there are a few coaches that were saying, there's this guy that is like shirtless all the time on the field at like 5 a.m. Uh, and we cannot figure out who he is. He's like getting the weights and strapping them behind him and doing all these crazy workouts. And for like weeks, we could not figure out who this was. We thought it was a football player or other things because uh, the people that were watching were, didn't know. So uh, finally it comes out, uh, they're like, oh, he has a big tattoo across his chest. And we're like, that has to be Ethan. So uh, he was the mysterious morning workout guy. Um, and I think that talks a little bit about uh, what he did to get himself, again, back fit before the summer and after the injury and everything like this. So uh, very strong season, Ethan. Well done and congratulations. Thank you. Of course. And we got, we got your hat here. There you go. Limited edition. Limited edition. That's right. <laughs> Next up is our very own number four, Enzino. <laughs> so I remember first week or so I move up here in July. Um, Coach and I are hard at work on the golf course, uh, <laughs> preparing for the season, having meetings, and we get, a, we get a text when we get back in the car, and it's from Enzo saying that he had just did his knee and he won't be able to come for the season. Um, me not knowing anything about the team, I was like, oh, that sounds like a bummer. Enzo was a good player on film. Um, it would have been nice to have him around. There was a moment where we weren't sure if Enzo would get to be here or not for the semester, and John and I were talking about, like, oh, like, can we have him around? What roles could he have? This and that. Um, and I cannot, cannot be happier with the decision that Enzo made to be here, but also the role that he fulfilled. Um, a lot of you guys don't see what he did for us at training. Um, being able to use his mind to understand what needs need to be met ahead of time and sometimes being asked to do interesting things at training, like go get a whistle in, a, in an office every now and then because somebody forgot a whistle or get a phone or a watch or something. Um, it's very, very important for us. But also um, what needs to be told about Enzo is the work rate to get himself back to be able to train at all this season. Um, he was very much ahead of schedule for what the injury was when he did it. Um, so for him to be back training at the end of the season the last few weeks um, shows the drive. And we hope very much so that that drive will continue so where he's back on the pitch with you guys in the fall. So thank you very much, Enzo. Yeah. Up the Gunners. Up the Gunners. Up the, hey, gunners. Top the table as well. <laughs> Top the table. Top the table. All right, so the next is Travis. Uh, welcome up here. Congratulations. Uh, so if I, if I, the first time I met Travis, if I have a videotape of some of the instances and things that uh, happened this season, uh, the maturity, the leadership that he is a captain on the team, I don't think I would believe you. Uh, first of all, uh, he was his size, but built like Isaac, so uh, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit different here. Um, <laughs> no, yeah, no more strays for Isaac anymore. Um, but uh, his approach to life was a lot different as well. Um, he has gained a lot of toughness. He has gained a lot of ability to deal with difficult situations, and he's built, brought a lot of um, life experience. Um, I think in every season before this season, Travis uh, has had uh, like a big family thing happen. Um, and so uh, I am very pleased and blessed that one, he joined me here, but two, he brings the wealth of experience, uh, character and knowledge that he has. So I'm really proud of him. Again, he come, uh, I think the defensive group played very well, but he took the opportunities he had on the field uh, and executed really, really well uh, and was a huge part of Again, what we accomplished through the season. So, well done, Travis. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, here you go. <laughs> here you go. Yes. <laughs> Next up, our Guatemala man, Juan Fernando. You are good, sir. 
<clears throat> now, normally, the player that wears the number six, um, at least here in the States, you think, oh, that's the ball-winning midfielder, um, the guy that's pinging the passes, I'm um, defending, protecting the center backs. Um, and then you know that it's Wanford that wears it. Oh, Wanford's an attacking midfielder. Like, had those things don't normally go together. But I tell you, Wanford is one of the most aggressive and best tacklers we have on the team, especially within the press. Um, and that comes from his mentality. Um, Wanford's mentality, as I've gotten to know him, has really impressed me. A um, little bit of chip on the shoulder mentality, underdog mentality, which I like, but also a desire to, to get better, to win, to run, which he does very well. The second thing I really appreciate about Wanfer, and I hope that some of you boys maybe can, can take this from him, is every time I see Wanfer, it's a big smile. It's, how are you, coach? He's one of the nicest guys I've ever met when it comes to just saying hi. <laughs> and he's like, come on. All right. So hopefully, all of us in the room could be a bit more like Wanfer with the way he carries himself, the way he lights up a room and that. So thank you very much, Wanfer. All right, so next, of course, is uh, Mr. Joaquin. So welcome. Welcome up. Um, hold on. Um, so a lot of things we can say about Joaquin. Of course, the accomplishments uh, first, serving as the captain, NCCA North Region uh, first team, uh, second team in the UMAC, and then joint top goal scorer uh, for the team with seven goals here. So uh, these are all the statistics and everything. Um, but for me, uh, this guy, one discussion with this guy, I think, uh, really, uh, shows what he did for us this season. So, uh, we had a few discussions both last fall at the end, uh, and last spring, especially, uh, about the place in leadership that he has in the team and, and we wanted to develop him into. And so we have like 10 different things that we expect and ask of, of leaders to do and be. Uh, and one of the things that I think he, he really latched on to was, um, I'm a, I'm a LeBron James fan, so he has this, this thing where he says, I'm the man in the arena, um, which means that in the big moments, I'm the guy that, I, that wants the ball, that wants to make the play. Uh, and we say, uh, the man on the pitch. And uh, for me, Joaquin, I think you could go through every of those seven goals, and those were the key moments. His big performances came at the key times. Um, we don't have to speak about, uh, again, getting us back in the game against Voice, uh, the goal in the regional final, the goal to win against Northwestern. He stepped up and he played his best in the most meaningful games. Um, you saw at the end of the season when things were getting very decisive, uh, nobody could touch him. Like there'd be four guys and he'd come through somehow. Um, and so uh, I'm very proud of his step into leadership uh, in this way and in many others. And so uh, for me, he is a leader that you can look at and watch his performance and, and try to embody. So uh, really proud of what you put in this season and looking forward to, to what's next for us. So well done. <laughs> Yeah. There you are. Next up, one of our two Europeans, Luca Kaltenbach. You look good, Luca. You look good. Thank you. So, a couple of things I really, really appreciate about Luca. One, obviously, is his performance on the field, but um, just the way he goes about his business. Um, Always very composed. He doesn't allow the moment to get too big for him or too small. Um, very consistent in the way he goes about his job. Um, and never asks for anything more. Never complains about what he's doing or what he's being asked to do. Um, I think he played every role in midfield. And then for John last year, having to play some, some time in the back as well. Um, he, I can make a really terrible joke right now. <laughs> You could say he's a Swiss Army knife. Ha ha ha. ha, ha. Uh, boo. Uh, no help from Jose. Thank you. Appreciate it. Anyway, that's why you don't go off the cuff. Luca. You just yeah. Stick to the script. Anyway, um, really, really appreciate about that, that about Luca. The second thing I appreciate about Luca, again, same as Juan for just um, the way that he approaches every day, one within the team, but also with the professionalism in mind as well. Um, can't remember a time he was it. He wasn't early to training, early to a film session, um, making sure he's ready and actually attentive, unlike some of you. Um, always eager to learn and ready to be adaptable to whatever role he's playing. So we really appreciate Luca and everything that he did for us this year. Thank you, buddy. Luca. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Uh, next up, Mr. Ashton Hostler. All right. Uh, so. 
Again, Ash in the statistics in the award. So second team all conference uh, as voted by the coaches. Uh, and then again, joint uh, team high of seven goals. Also the sportsmanship award. Yes, very, very, the best of his accomplishments. <laughs> Uh, so I think a little bit on Ashton uh, as it relates to this as well. When he came in, so I, I met Ashton before I met any of you because I coached his brother and he was like a tiny, tiny kid when I met him. Um, but uh, from then and, and kind of what I heard and what I saw in the recruitment process, I knew he was a competitor. I knew he was going to fight, maybe fight some people, uh, other things like this. Uh, but what I was proud of him was he was a very good competitor but with restraint. A very good like fighter, but uh, knew when and what to do. Uh, again, he's only cautioned once, which is, which is crazy uh, for the way that he plays and everything. Um, but I think that is um, emblematic of the performance he gives in the season. Uh, he's there, he trains hard, he fights, he never misses sessions, uh, but he does it so in a way uh, that uh, doesn't get him into trouble with the referee, doesn't uh, hurt any relationships with, with his peers. And so I think, uh, again, the fire that he brings is super, super vital. Um, and again, in a way that, that builds the team as well. So well done, Ashton. Yeah. Ah, uh, you got There you go. Uh, number 10. El Capitan Santisiro Santino. <laughs> yeah. Now, we could be up here for so long telling stories about, about Santi, um, about all the great attributes about him, but I would rather personally talk about Santino, um, his, his alter ego that Santi enters, I think, when, when Santi feels like he's being challenged or if he feels like he's being doubted. Um, he's got a little bit of, I'll show you what's up um, in him. I wish he would bring that out more, but when he does... Santino comes out, you know what I mean? Um, scoring pivotal goals for us, leading in a lot of ways, leading in the way that he presses, leading in the way that he goes about um, his business on the field. But also I really appreciate the way that he role models um, how to be a collegiate student athlete here at Crown. Um, to the rest of you guys, um, takes care of his academics, um, takes care of his work off the pitch, takes care of the misses as well. Um, let's also take this time to, to thank uh, Mrs. Ciro for allowing Santi to be with us every day. Yeah. Very helpful. Thank you very much. Um, yeah. So what, what I'm really excited for, for Santi is to, to take what we build on um, this year and to go into Santi's final year for him to go out with some silverware um, since he's been here um, the longest, right, out of anyone here. So um, Santi deserves it along with Emerson to, uh, to get something out of the season. So... Congratulations, Santi. Ah, yes. All right, number 11, Pedro. Um, so part of part of uh, my my time that's been spent since the season has been every time I try to go back and watch every single match again, uh, just to see from a, a fresh perspective what did I miss, what did what did we what could have we done, uh, other things like this, and especially early in the season, uh, it was clear uh, what we miss later with what Pedro brings. Um, uh, we don't uh, do as high of analytics as we'd like to, but every time he receives the ball, he, one, is able to, to do an action to complete a pass, but two, progress the game. Uh, the way he utilizes the space is so good, and uh, for me, we miss him so much in the end of the season. So uh, we know that he's professional in the way he goes about things. He's already got doctor's appointments and everything to sort, sort stuff out, um, but for me, uh, Pedro is, is key to what we want to be building, uh, we're really excited to get him back on the pitch. So, yeah. Pedro. <laughs> yeah, it's very important. The main man of the hour, Emerson Grethick. Come on up. A couple of things about Emerson um, that I appreciate greatly. Um, again, the mentality to coming into training. Um, what I really appreciate about Emerson, the way um, when he would come in to talk to us coaches in the office is just 
Coach, what can I do to help the team? Coach, what can I do to help the team? Coach, I want the team to be successful. Never ever succumb in and say, hey, I want this. Hey, coach, I need this. Hey, it's my last year. Can I do this? It was never that. It was always about you guys. It was always about us uh, and us mentality, which is really, really important and says a lot um, about Emerson and where he's going to go later on in life. Um, the other thing about Emerson is, and it's a kind of a theme of the night for some of you guys who, who don't have as big of personalities, Emerson's got some banter in him as well. Um, <laughs> He, he let it show a couple times in the vans with us, um, as he did, but um, I, I'm happy about the personality and the character that he brings to the dressing room, and he will definitely be missed um, next season, but we're excited, and we hope to keep tabs on you and see what you do um, in your next steps of life. So thank you, Emerson. Thank you, bud. Thank you. All right, next, Mr. Mon Montano. There he is. <laughs> Montano. <laughs> All right, so uh, from, from the, yeah, Mr. Montano. Uh, from the beginning, I was not sure about this guy. Um, he comes in with his bad haircut, and, uh, and uh, every team meeting, he comes with a backwards hat. He looks like he's 12, you know. Uh, his ear pods in all the time. There's an interesting incident where we thought there was contraband in his room for a second, you know. So uh, there was not, there was not, you know, <laughs> that we know of. Um, but he was an interesting guy that I couldn't read from the beginning. Uh, we talked some on the phone, and in those calls, it seemed like he was, you know, a professional, serious guy. But uh, we saw something a little bit different. Uh, but what I respect about him is uh, in that fun-loving nature, there is a lot of steel, and there is a lot of... Uh, once we get onto the pitch, the, the switch flips. Um, and so uh, you can say, uh, or you can see, we don't have to speak about the ability uh, so much, you guys know. Uh, but I appreciate, number one, the, the evolution I think that he makes. Uh, he is a very beloved figure around campus, around our offices as well. He spends way too much time there, but that's okay. Um, and uh, yeah, the way he approaches his school and, and uh, his relationships are, are very good, uh, again, much better than I feared. So uh, congratulations, Alan, on a great first season, and, yeah, we'll keep going. Well done. Go ahead. Yes, yes. All right. You all know which number is next. Number 14, Diego Romero. So, um, as you all know, I am from the state of Indiana, the great state of Indiana, and the thing that we do in Indiana is we play high school basketball. Um, a key element to every high school basketball team, especially on the boys' side, is the scout team. Um, what the scout team does is they play as the opposition, they run the same sets, they run all the same plays, and that helps the, the actual varsity team to get ready for what's about to come to them. And every single time when John and I prepare a day before game session, we're like, all right, where can we put Diego to make sure our boys are prepared for what they're about to face? Um, having Diego here this season was very important um, for um, preparing you guys for matches. He made you better um, every time he puts the ball top bins on one of the goalkeepers, he makes you better. Every time he nutmegs you in training, he makes you better. Every time he blocks a shot and then yells in your face, as he should, <laughs> He makes you better, um, and that just shows the character that Diego has to um, go what he's going through, but also want to serve the team at the same time. It shows his humility. Um, so now, as he has helped you, I hope you guys as a brotherhood can now help him achieve his goals, which is getting back on the pitch, right? That's what we all want for him and for us as well. So I hope together as a group, we can do that because we all want number 14 on the pitch as soon as possible. So thank you, Diego. <laughs> All right, next, Mr. Bataya. All right, uh, so first, the accomplishments. Uh, he does a number of things. So uh, he has team high for us in minutes, uh, so a lot of minutes. He was very close to breaking Jose's record, but, uh, you know, uh, Jose made sure that we didn't go to the final of the NCCAA, so he couldn't. Um, 
<laughs> he also he also was uh, joint uh, team high with three assists. Again, with what the statisticians put, at least. Um, so accomplished a lot in these areas. He won a lot of awards. Uh, so with NCCA first team all North Region, the MVP of the North Region, and announced today. I don't know if you guys saw it, but he was selected as a first team All American. So congratulations to Sir Nick for this. Yeah. As well as, as well as being first team all conference. So again, he, he deservedly gets a lot of the notoriety and respect from the, the teams that we play against. Uh, Cerny's story is, is very interesting. So he comes very last minute. Like this time last year, I did not know who Cerny Bataya was, uh, but he comes very last minute in the spring of last year. And I don't know if the spring semester could have gone worse. He comes. Uh, the first time on the flight, there is a player that's trapped in prison in the airport, basically, that he helps negotiate the time out of. Uh, he comes back and he's sending pictures of the huge piles of snow uh, to his family, like, what have I done here, uh, coming here? Uh, and then, again, other personal and, and health issues that made the semester a difficult one. Uh, but he persevered and he came back and he came back uh, at the top quality, I think, to play in Spain and to do other things in the summer make sure his confidence is very high. And then he puts uh, huge performances in during the season, both with quality and with toughness. Um, again, he was available for every single game. Uh, I think you were available for every single practice, more or less. Um, and for me, uh, to have a player that has the quality that he has, but also have the toughness that he has is, is very important. So I'm really proud of what you accomplished this season. So, well done. Yep. You got one. Okay. There you go. Go ahead. <laughs> All right. Next one, number 16, Max Henderson. Now, this currently is not going to fit, but I'm going to give it to you anyway. <laughs> All right. Thanks, it'll, look, it'll look good, though. Appreciate it. So, um, I think we all feel like we know Max very well um, because Max always can fill a room with his personnel. Okay, I like it. I like it. Of course. Um, fill the room with his personality or fill the van with his hot NFL takes. Um, but I think there's many sides to Max that a lot of you do not know. Um, I think Max is a calculated young man. I think he is a man that, that feels and loves very deeply. And I want you all to know the love and admiration that he has um, for you guys and for this program. Um, I know he may not communicate it to you right now, or maybe he does in private, but I want you all to know that. Um, the way that Max sacrifices his body um, in training, um, the, why, the way that he sacrifices his time to make sure that he could even be here in the first place is, is commendable, and we want to um, acknowledge that. Um, the other thing I want to acknowledge is just the mentality and also the competitiveness um, to develop as a goalkeeper. Um, I don't know if many of you know this either, but Max did not grow up necessarily in the soccer world by any means. So for him to be as good as he is, as quickly as he is, is very impressive. Um, so I commend you for that and the, the way that you're willing to take on a different way of coaching the goalkeeper position from me, um, as well as John this season. I think we... Um, we're able to have some good conversations about um, the way things that could be done or should be done. I think it benefited the other goalkeepers as well from being able to hear those conversations, whether in English and Spanish, I couldn't tell you um, <laughs> what was being said on the other half, but I'm sure, I'm sure it was always positive for me, of course. <laughs> um, but no, um, really, really, really happy with where Max got to at the end of the season. I'm excited to see what is next for yeah. him. So again, uh, I think you guys know Max uh, made the decision uh, to, to make a transfer away. Um, I, this is a discussion that we had. Um, and uh, while I'm sad about this, uh, to, to lose Max and everything that he brings, I respect the decision that he makes to, to go in and ultimately to play. And so uh, we're really proud of what you've given. Uh, I've known Max as a player. I've known Max as, uh, as an employee, as a fellow, fellow coach. Um, and so I'm, I'm proud of what he's, he's done in all of those arenas. And of course, we're, we're wishing him the best uh, in the next step. So uh, thank you, Max. Appreciate it, buddy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, all good. All right. 
All right, next, Sebastian. Say bye. Say bye. Um, so for me, the story of, of Seba started with a, with a legend, you know? I get a message from Marcus. We had just signed Marcus, and Marcus sends me, like, well, first of all, we'll, we'll get to Marcus later, but uh, he sends me the longest message I've ever received from, from him saying, I have this friend named Sebastian that is, like, such a good player, best player I've ever seen, blah, 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 all of this. And I say, okay, that's very high praise from a guy I've heard three words from before. Um, so... Uh, of course, Seba comes out to the indoor session. Uh, I'm not allowed to watch, uh, so I, I don't watch, of course. Um, and uh, the day after, no lie, maybe you know this, maybe you don't. I think five guys came into my office and they said, oh, the Sebastian guy, he's something different. Uh, the way he plays so, so good and he can help us so, so much. Um, and then finally, I was able to experience by going and watching your, your matches in the spring. And uh, yeah, the, the buzz was real and, and I was very bought into to who you were as a player. So uh, of course, a very unfortunate uh, season with the injuries, but I think uh, for about a week or two, we got to catch a glimpse of, of who the player is uh, that is Seba, uh, the quality that he brings, the flair that he brings, the attacking that he brings, the decisiveness that he brings. And so uh, we're excited to, again, get him back so that we can see that for a, an entire season. And I know this guy is going light to the, light the UMAC on fire. So we're really excited for that. So well done, Seba. We'll get your hat. All right, the next, next man that we just mentioned referred to you, Marcus Banegas. <laughs> <laughs> First thing we need to acknowledge, while he was not able to be here, he is certainly, undoubtedly, a significantly better basketball player than almost everyone in this room. <laughs> yes, Isaac. Yes, Enzo. <laughs> not even close. Um, we just need to get that out of the way. Um, a couple of things I really appreciate about Marcus. First of all, um, just the way that he plays and the way he thinks about the game, um, being able to play in a multitude of roles, um, being able to be creative. Um, um, one ways to, to get the ball into his left foot, and um, the other just the, the way that he finds line-breaking passes, um, ways that he can get us out of danger, this, that. Um, but the main thing that I appreciate about Marcus is, is his mentality. Um, the way I describe Marcus is very simple. I think he's, I think he's a dog. Um, I think the way he competes, his toughness <laughs> level from, from wanting to always to be playing, and I think we all know what that means um, with the Sunday League. Um, <laughs> To even um, some things that some of you may not know that Marcus wraps his own ankles to make sure that he can play. Um, doing workouts at the wee hours of the morning or the wee hours at night to keep his body ready to go so he can continue to play as many minutes as possible. Um, Marcus does not say much, um, but I think, but what I think about Marcus is that he would give anything for the team and for the group in order for the group to have success. And I think he shows that on a daily basis. So we thank you for that, Marcus. That, <laughs> All right, Mr. Lucam. <clears throat> All right, so a few things first. Uh, uh, UMAC, uh, he was honorable mention all conference. There's a typo there. Um, but uh, Luke also set a program record in appearances. So he is the only player. Uh, that's here that appeared in every single game. Uh, so 24, uh, that's, that's pretty good. That is a lot of appearances. Um, so very good on him to be available for everything, uh, every training session, every, everything. I know the, the preparation he, he brought uh, to the team was able to allow him to do that. Uh, Luke is the first recruit I met in Minnesota. I, uh, Carolyn would know this. I came to Minnesota. We were kind of transitioning from Chicago last year. Um, and the very first thing that I did was a uh, little camp for, for Luke's school, and Marcus was there as well. Um, and as soon as I saw him, I said, this is, this is a very interesting player that I have to get to know. So right after the camp, we talked for an hour about uh, 
you know, uh, mutual connections or people that we knew uh, through the club world. And uh, we had a very long recruiting process to get him here, and we're really excited for uh, what he has done. Uh, for me, Luke had some very, very strong performances through the season. Uh, we spoke today in our meeting about uh, uh, some of these times where he brought the quality. And so uh, for me, he is a player that can uh, do a, a ton at this level, and we look forward to him continuing to be consistent and, and growing in that uh, to build on, you know, a great season to, to start your career. So well done, Luke. Here, I'll give this for you since I know you got a tough day. <laughs> all right. We all know who number 20 is. Come on up here. Isaac Schultz. <laughs> <laughs> so, so with the way that many of these presentations have gone, I'm sure there's a lot of anticipation about what could be said about Isaac Schultz. Um, however, um, I'm going to take an opportunity here to talk about Isaac in a different light. Um, I know that because of his personality, Isaac always brings laughs and smiles to whatever group of people he is with. I think sometimes that takes away, actually, from the way that he's perceived, because a lot of times in training and in games, I see a very, very fierce competitor and a guy that wants to win a lot and a guy that wants to grow a lot. Um, you'll see in training, um, he'll do his double scissor, he'll get onto his left foot, he'll smash the ball to the bottom corner, and he'll yell. And our first reaction, of course, is to maybe giggle a little bit because, like, oh, it's Isaac. But, like, Isaac's not, mess Isaac's not messing around. Isaac <laughs> True. Isaac's not, um, Isaac did not come to crown just to, have a, just to have a good time and to laugh. Isaac came to grow, to develop as a player, to win a spot, and to win minutes. And you all saw at the end of the season, Isaac was playing, starting um, in big minutes and big games. Um, and that is because he earned it. Um, so I think that comes from that mentality and that, and that fierce competitiveness. So I hope he continues to find the balance of being a competitor and working hard, but also continuing to bring the personality to the dressing room um, that we all need. Um, unfortunately, though, I do have to bring up that for the Van Rides this season, I think Max is at least like seven points up minimum, <laughs> um, at minimum. Uh, so there is a long way to, uh, to go with that, but I think you'll grow in that department as well. So I agree. <laughs> All right, Mr. Omar. All right, uh, so I cannot speak enough. Uh, we'll speak a little bit, but I cannot speak enough about the, how foundational Omar is to the community of this team. Um, he was there, again, not from the very beginning like uh, Santi and Emerson, but he was there from the beginning of the chapter uh, that I think we're writing right now. Uh, and the work that he puts in with the relationships within the team is, is so vital. The work that he puts in, even relating to people outside of the team, is so vital. And I think he builds uh, the platform that, that we stand on as a team um, with, with the work that he does. Uh, on the field, uh, Omar has found his home. Uh, I truly believe that. Uh, we talk a lot through the season with striker, midfielder, other things like this. Uh, and for me, at the end of the season, your performance in the midfield was very strong. I think uh, the first game with Faith, again, we can speak a little bit in a second about the moment there, but the first game against Faith uh, with him and Cuiar together, we knew that there's the quality there, there's the ideas there, and there's the discipline there to be a, a very strong player in this position. So uh, I really appreciate his patience uh, to work, to do everything we ask in any position we ask, and now I feel very strongly, again, he's found a home. Uh, make big contributions in a lot of the games down the stretch uh, in big minutes, and uh, really proud of how he stuck with everything uh, through this time. So uh, congrats, Omar, and very well done. All right, N next up, number 22, Diego Cuiar. You, 
look good. You look good. You clean up well. Yeah, very sharp. So Diego is another one of our type of players that, um, again, doesn't say much, doesn't ask for much, but I think, again, um, in different ways than Isaac, I think he shows his competitiveness and his fire um, um, on the training pitch. Again, not something that you hear or see, but I think you see it in the way that he tackles, um, in the way that he strikes the ball from 20, 30, 40, 45 yards out at any point. Um, <laughs> Because that's the desire to win. That's the desire to, uh, to make an impact on the team. Um, for Diego, um, I think about humility. I think about servant leadership. I think about um, relationships as well. Um, Diego fits a cool niche in the team and in the locker room for us, so I'm excited for what, um, what is in store for Diego, both in his development in the long term, but also in the short term with this group as well. So excited to continue to work with you, Diego. All right, next up, Timmy Jackson. All right, uh, I will stand on this till the day that I die. The best 15-minute period played by any single player on any team uh, that was a part of one of our games was Timmy Jackson at Edgewood. Um, the runs, the movement, the, the decisiveness and the finishing shows the quality that, that you have. Um, uh, for me, he developed a lot even since the initial recruitment that we had, and he was very committed to getting better um, throughout the summer. I saw him uh, once during the ID camp, uh, some of you guys were around, and I was very impressed with the level that he brought, and I think he raised that even from there. Um, so again, very committed to this craft, to his craft, um, and we know uh, that we've seen just the beginning of what, what Timmy has to bring. So. Uh, really excited to continue to work with him um, and uh, continue to see uh, with more consistently uh, consistency that quality that you show. So, well done. Here you go. Oh. Next up, oh. Tate Gavin. First of all, I need to make sure everyone sees the belt buckle. We all need to we get cultured here. This is a belt buckle. This is what you do when you are from. Okay. First of all, um, something that needs to be acknowledged from all of us um, is that Tade, Tade's sacrifice to be with us, to be with the team, is a, is a big one. Um, as we know, he is a, is it, are we technically four sport? or three, four? four? Four sport athlete at the collegiate level. Um, and it's not just that Tate is, you know, just participating on four collegiate teams in a junior varsity role or something. Instead, he gets minutes with us. He's the number one for the tennis team. He's placing at the UMAC um, cross country meet. He is contributing to many, many parts um, of the school and to the athletic program. And I think that, again, comes to, from his mentality that comes out in a few different ways. One, um, it was not seen enough, in my opinion, but uh, Tate's personality in the van was a good one, boys, was it not? Uh, Tate, Tate took the first ride, he, he, he read the room, and then he came out firing. Um, again, not to shoot a stray at Isaac, but Isaac caught a couple from Tate that were tough. <laughs> they, were, they were tough, but... Um, but no, I love the personality that, that Tate brings, but not just in the van. There's a few of you that know um, and got a taste of Tate's competitiveness on the field as well. Um, Tate not only will shut you down in, a, in an attacking activity, but then he will let you know about it afterward. And I and, I and John both love that in a center back a ton. So my hope for Tate is that while, yes, he is the number one for tennis, that is his sport, um, I hope he finds a way to stick around with us because I think there's something here as a, as a soccer player as well. And I think he enjoys the guys um, immensely. So just know that he sacrifices a lot to be with you guys, to make you guys better. Um, and I'm excited for what the future holds. But in the short term, we have to make sure we all at least once as a team make it to a tennis match of Tades to talk as much trap to his opponent as possible. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, well, that's <laughs> Thank you.
All right, next up, Jude McVitie. Yeah, Jude. Great season. Good Thank job. You. Good job. So I, I appreciate uh, the evolution of Jude that we see over the season. Um, again, uh, coming in, didn't know him super well. Um, but uh, throughout the season, there are a lot of off-field highlights that we could play on the screen that would be uh, really exciting for, for Jude. Uh, we won't say anything about the Denton's basement. Uh, we, we won't say, my favorite season, we talk about uh, Tade talking trash a little bit, but uh, my favorite was when Jude gives it right back to him. So uh, that's something I appreciated uh, going throughout the season. Again, we've spoken at length before, uh, the commitment that he has to develop to be a, a big piece of this team. Uh, and every opportunity, uh, again, we, we do player ratings, every opportunity he takes, he does well. Uh, every time he steps on the pitch, he, he produces and, uh, again, uh, creates a really good performance each time. So, well done, Jude. Next up, Mati. 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 So for me, with Mateo and the goalkeeping group, um, there's so many things that could be said. Um, for me, a lot of what goalkeeping is within a team is the goalkeeper union itself. Um, for me, Mateo, not only, I mean, we could talk about him as a player a lot, the way he developed the season from where some of his goalkeeper attributes were when I first got here to where they are now, skyrocketed. Um, I hope you guys saw that in training. I think you did towards the end in like some of those cage moments. You guys could, you could never score on him. Um, and that's because of the development that he brought. But I also want to talk about the way that he makes Leo better to get to where he got to win the awards that he won. The way that he got Max to the level that he is now at and be able to go on and do some great things at his next place. It is because of the, serv the service from Mateo as well. Um, as we were focusing on handling and holding um, shots more. We wanted um, parts of activities that we wanted the ball striking to be harder. And Mate said, okay. <laughs> and I don't think he's hit a volley to hands under 50 mile an hour since I said that. And I think because of that, um, everyone um, in the goalkeeper room has gotten better. And that is a testament to his character, his work rate, and his love and appreciation for you guys. So thank you, Mate. <laughs> All right, the best dressed man. Wow. Yeah. Um, not many of you guys come up and make me look bad, but look at this guy. Huh? Um, so yeah, uh, Quinn had a, a season, and I think if I summarize him in one word, it is commitment. Um, Commitment to the group and, and to the needs of the group. Uh, so, of course, you guys know, uh, especially the freshmen know, we kind of divvy up the, the tasks a little bit of the operations of what it takes to, to run the team. And so uh, last season as a freshman, Quinn's job was to do the water. Uh, this season was Tade. Um, but I think uh, Tade was slacking maybe a little bit uh, at some of the times. And then Quinn said, I will not be having that. There is a legacy here to continue. <laughs> Uh, so Tade lost his job uh, with that and the commitment to the group. That is one small example of what, what, what Quinn brings. He comes each day to the session again to work and to fight. He has some times through the season with a prolonged time of sickness and other things, uh, but he comes back and he fights and he works and, and he makes each of you guys better. So uh, again, the character that he has uh, is, is impeccable, just as is his fashion sense. So well done. All right, for those of you that are doing math, we only have two more. So first, Jose. Look at this guy. You aren't going to put your, your sunglasses on for this, huh? No, you're good. <laughs> All right. Um, so much can be said um, about Jose on the field. Um, I want to talk a bit about, about Jose off the pitch. So first of all, um, for some of you that, again, don't know, um, he does speak, and when, 
And when he speaks, um, it, al it always holds some weight. And for those of us in the van, we know well when Jose speaks, it is, it is heard and it is felt. Um, but also, I think, in the locker room, um, on the pitch, and as well as in the classroom, um, wherever you guys are doing your group stats projects, well, for sure. Um, Jose serves the team well in a, in a multitude of ways. One, the minutes he plays. Two, the way that he fights. Three, the way that he plays two to three positions a game or at a time um, for the betterment of the team. Um, along with that, Jose is not asking for anything in return. He's not asking for any awards. He's not asking for any recognition. Jose just wants to go out, be Jose, do his stats homework, and then hang out with his girl. So <laughs> we really appreciate that with, from Jose, um, and I'm excited to see what Jose does next for us in the spring and the fall. Well done. Great season. So for all people that ever come through this program in the future, uh, far past when I am here, far past when Haas is here, there will always be the legend of the R99. Uh, this man, go ahead, come on up. This man. <laughs> Some, sometimes in life, you will go through different journeys and things, and like the end is the end, and there's nothing spectacular or special about this. I don't think Arthur can ever say that about his college soccer journey. Um, it could have been that way, um, but uh, we make the decision together uh, with the injury he has to his hand that we want to try him as a striker. I think, honestly, his trial was in some of the goalkeeper uh, sessions, and he was like uh, diving everywhere to get headers on frame or whatever it might be to say, Coach, come on, I can be a striker. <laughs> and again, uh, he appears four, five times, he scores four goals, and I think never again will there be as high a goal to minute ratio. Uh, he's so decisive in the box. And for me, the story of Arthur is one of the reasons that, that I coach, uh, to, to see the joy uh, that it brings, of course, to, to one man, to, to Arthur, but also the joy that it brings to the entire team. Uh, the scenes when he scores against uh, Faith the first time. Uh, every time he touches the ball, we can tell uh, because of what he has built within the team, uh, the joy that you all experience together as well. Um, so, uh, so happy with, with what he has brought in the story that's been told through Arthur this year. So well done. Thank you, Faith. All right, uh, so next, uh, again, we go to, to some of the awards. Uh, we'll speak at, at length about each of the awards. Uh, and then, again, if you receive an award, uh, you can come up. Haas, if you want to kind of organize those so we don't give them the wrong ones. Uh, but, again, uh, individual awards we uh, use as ways for you as a group to um, recognize individuals with different voting uh, for the, the awards in the season. Those are all people from the outside, the coaches, and now it's time for you guys to, to recognize the awards. So it was fun for me to watch as the votes come in, uh, people uh, going up and down and everything, but we're, we're excited for these awards. So uh, the first award that we give, uh, we have a nice little video, so hopefully we can uh, not ruin the suspense here. Uh, but the first, the first one uh, is the player of the year. So we define that as uh, again, something voted on by the players, the, the player that made the, the largest on-field impact uh, during the season. So uh, this is a player um, uh, that uh, was recognized both uh, by his teammates and also uh, during the season by, by the other coaches uh, as a player that brings something special to the team. Uh, again, a multifaceted player uh, that brings both quality and uh, the mentality. Uh, he brings the experience to the game as well that I think is very important. Uh, and, and he puts together a, a very, very strong season as a center back in the player of the year, Cerny Bataya. Well done. All right, you want to say something? Uh, yes, come on, you, you have to. It's required. You have to. Required.
<laughs> oh, hey, don't miss it, Cena. Don't miss it. Oh. <laughs> 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 Tony! Hey! <laughs> Speech! <laughs> Speech! <laughs> no, I'm not good at doing speeches, but I just want to thank you all. Thank you guys because like, individual awards, like you don't win a, an individual award just by yourself. It's because of the help that other people give you. And like, I just want to thank you guys for this amazing season. And that's it. Yeah. <laughs> we'll take it. We'll take it. <laughs> All right, uh, the next award that we will give uh, today is the goal of the season. So again, uh, this is a goal voted on by the, by the players. Uh, best goal uh, that was scored this season. Again, we ask you to consider individual quality of the goal, uh, the team buildup, and uh, the context of the goal that was scored. So we scored a number of good goals. I think last year there were some good team goals. This year we had a lot of good individual goals that we had to, to choose from. Uh, and for me, this was the moment that, uh, that for me at least, I felt the most. Uh, this is a goal that was of the utmost quality as far as the technique goes, but I think also is a great goal that is emblematic of the work that this player has put in over the past uh, few years. So the goal of the season is... Okay. Is... <laughs> Omar Navarro versus Faye. Yeah. Hey! <laughs> Celebrate Omar. <laughs> Congratulations. Speech. <laughs> I know that one. <laughs> uh, let me make sure. All right. Uh, so Please. the next is the newcomer of the year. We want to recognize a, a player, a freshman or transfer, uh, that as a newcomer uh, made a, a big impact on the field, on the on the game. So again, the jury is out if Cerny is newcomer or not. But because he won the individual award, uh, he is not eligible for voting. So uh, the newcomer of the year is a player. Uh, that come in, uh, again, uh, recruiting wise, uh, we have an idea of where the quality of players are, uh, but this player, I think more than any I've recruited in my, my years has surpassed the expectation that I have for him, uh, put together a really, really strong season. And the winner is Alan Montano. Hey. <laughs> well done. Congratulations. Whoop. There you go. Whoop. Brexit. Brexit. <laughs> Brexit. Uh.
Here it comes again. <laughs> Handball. <laughs> Well, first of all, thanks everybody. Thanks coaches, teammates. Um, I love this sport and I love you guys. And thanks to that, I have been able to be here working every day so hard. Um, to play, to be better, to be to get the team to be better. Um, I really feel like a family with you, even when I don't talk to everybody or I don't spend a lot of time with everybody. I do care of you guys. Um, I want you everybody to get to a point where you feel good with yourself. That's why I'm always there in your ass, scream at you. Um, who maybe not always be the best space and I know I have to work on that but I really want you guys to be better and I know all of you can do it so I just want you I just want to say thanks and I let's keep working because next year is going to be better so. hey. All right, the next award we have, again, uh, this is the last one voted on by you guys, is the Teammate Teammate Award. Uh, this is an award that was like very hotly contested between a, a few guys, and I think rightly so. Uh, but this player, uh, kind of at the end, uh, ended up winning. Um, so again, uh, a player who's an ideal teammate, uh, somebody that uh, serves the team, sacrifices for the team, uh, and creates the great relationships with t between different people. So. Again, a very deserving winner. Uh, this guy uh, cares so much for the team, celebrates so much together with the team. Um, and you can tell, and you'll see in the video a little bit, uh, with, with the celebrations and everything, what this means, uh, what he means to the team. Uh, the winner is a guy that uh, I have heard from, I don't know, maybe half of you guys, that he was a part of their process to get here. And many people have said, I would not be here uh, without Santi, so congratulations. Santi Ciro! Colasso! Tush! Eso! Tush! With power! With power! Humble, humble, humble. <laughs> hey. uh, I, I'm very happy, but very also unexpected. I. I'm just, I don't know, I don't really know what to say. I, I love you guys, I usually speak a lot, but I don't have a lot of words. <laughs> um, I, I love this program, genuinely. I, I love you guys. I think uh, it's been like a, a long journey and a, a lot of development personally for me about coming in the first time and then just thinking about myself and then progressing with all the people that I've met in my entire, my, my career, either people that graduated, Emerson, you guys as well, like focusing on, on, on each other and, and on you guys. I love you guys so much. Uh, I am so happy that that you know we're we're here and Emilia and I are here and that we get to be part of, of you guys with you and, and all the relationships that I have with each one of you. You know, from playing Fortnite with Isaac to you know going going uh, golfing or playing basketball uh, with Ashton and, and getting getting trashed on. You know, <laughs> so, so it's it's I love playing with you guys. I love everything that, that the relationships we have together and I hope that we can continue to create uh, memories together and as, as we continue to go forward and come that season. You know, start with a bang. Yes, sir. All 
All right, and the last award is a new award that we give. Uh, what I think our program is about is about development. Um, okay. We talk about the, the off-field portion of development, uh, but this award gives uh, recognition to somebody who really buys into the development uh, of their game and on the field. Um, this is something that we uh, actually put to a vote within the coaching staff, so I know there's only two of us here, but... Uh, we also uh, talk to CJ, of course, give consideration of who's serious about uh, the way they approach, like preparing themselves for the training session. We talk to Andrea about how serious are these people about uh, the way they take care of their bodies in rehab. Uh, we talk, of course, to Grant about um, how they do certain things. And uh, we even talk to uh, uh, the faculty at, uh, uh, representative Hayek about how, again, he perceives students in the in the classroom um, as part of that. And so this is an award uh, that we, wanna, we want to uh, give to somebody. Again, uh, this is something that we as a coaching staff uh, want to recognize this player for, for uh, being dedicated in the, the different areas. Uh, this guy, again, uh, I could say it about many of you as we think about it, but uh, available to train every time, wants to train extra reps every time, comes to training sessions early every time, okay? Uh, takes his development outside of crown very seriously uh playing at any moment that he can play uh outside of crown uh he goes to the gym uh a lot uh what he does there we're not quite sure uh but the winner uh of the development award a very well deserving is mr leo roque congratulations <laughs> Mistake. We'll fix this and get you a new one, but but okay. yeah, we won. That's good. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming in for the for the work. Um, yeah, so last year uh, I saw myself. I see myself like I can work hard. I can train hard, but I need to prove many things on myself. Uh, one of the things was my my body, so I want to be in a good in a good shape and a good performance. So for next season, to think I can do a great things, and I think I feel like I help the team uh, to get the results. So yeah, like as an advice and as I learned here in, in in USA, that you can have a good technique, but you also have to improve your, your body and to eat uh, to eat well, to do exercise. To, to do more training, so that's my advice for you guys. I think everyone has that technique, everyone is a good player. But yeah, as not only it has to be a good player, we have to improve many things. So so thank you so much and a good night guys. All right, uh, I will Coach, be... I'm going to steal the podium. Okay. I'm going to steal it. Before we look ahead, uh, we have one more thing that we need to do first before we, um, before we do so. We need to recognize two people very quickly as a group. First person we need to recognize, um, and we will hold our applause for a second, um, is Miss Carolyn. Um, what I hope many of you realize... Um, maybe not so soon for most of you, but later on down the line um, is the way that a husband and a, my, and a wife must work to build a life. Um, John and Carolyn made a, a big decision around a year and a half ago, maybe two years ago, to, to make a big move. Um, they, were, they had a good life in Chicago. Um, they had an exciting life, um, but they decided they wanted to change, and they decided that Crown was the spot for them but they also knew that they wanted to build a family while they were here as well. Now, we can say what we want maybe about the timing of building the family. Uh, maybe not having the baby in preseason is the most optimal. However, um, that, I think that shows more the sacrifice and the teamwork from Carolyn to allow John to, I don't think, you missed, you missed one session. Mm -hmm. um, that is not because um, of just John. That is because Carolyn said, no, like, do your job, serve the boys, 
um, coach them. I have, I'll hold it down here at home. Um, so now I hope that John now can give Carolyn a rest as he has in the last few weeks. As you know, he hasn't been in the office as early. He hasn't been staying as late. Um, that is so that he can help Carolyn. So if we could all give Carolyn a round of applause for her <laughs> sacrifice and service. <clears throat> we would also like to announce um, a signing for the class of 20, what would that be, 41? Yeah. 2041, 2042, Desmond <laughs> Forsyth as well. Uh, he's committed. <clears throat> While the commitment is maybe with a little bit of under the table, um, extra bottle feeds here and there, <laughs> uh, it's, a, it's a good signing. Um, lastly, um, obviously the other person we need to thank um, is John. I don't think you guys, well, you're not supposed to know, but you don't understand the amount of time that um, a head coach puts into the job. Um, I know you hear stories. Sometimes you maybe you read an article, you hear a podcast of the life of a coach. Um, there is no clocking in and clocking out as a coach. There is no turning your phone all the way off, silencing your phone and saying, all right, I'm going to go to bed. There is no even getting just a normal night's sleep. Um, John literally, literally works 24 hours a day, seven days a week for these type of moments, for, the, for, for this program and for this group of guys and for the next groups of guys as well. Um, John is a very demanding coach. We all know that. Um, but please understand that he is demanding because he cares. He is demanding because he wants you to be better as a group. And when we talk about development, like that is our passion. That is his passion. Yes, of course, we don't want to finish fifth in the UMAC. Yes, of course, we want to win a national championship. However, there's a lot more to the job for us and specifically for John. And is that, that's to develop you as players, develop your experience, develop you as men in the short term, but then in the long term, develop you to be a better husband, a better son, um, a better employee, employer, all those things. And that is why we are as demanding as with you as we are. That is why we set the professional standards that we do and those are going to continue to rise because of our ambition for you. And that is the vision that is cast specifically by John. Only I can, I can only echo it. I can aid in it sometimes. But ultimately, this is John's vision. And while, as we understand, as we look behind, that disappointing on the field result. However, I think with everything that has been said tonight, because of the program that John is running, lots of positive development um, in the lives of each of you, and I'm excited for more. So if we could uh, thank John for his hours that he has done, his hours he will continue to do for us. Thanks, Thanks, guys. Now you can look ahead. Thanks, Al. Appreciate it. Of course. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, so, yeah, no, I think that uh, that dovetails well into what we want to say. Um, again, the key word that I hear from, I think, almost every single one of you about uh, what we do, even though it's accomplishments this season, is disappointment. Uh, the desire to, to have more. I think I said at some point, don't think about the what ifs, but um, I'm sure each of you add. I think there are five, six games that if one goal is different, the outcome of our season is, looks very, very different. Um, and so for me, uh, the fine margins are not about ability. Uh, the fine margins aren't about the day. Uh, the fine margins are about the standards that we enforce and we keep in the program uh, throughout the time. Like Leo said, want to be very professional about the way we develop ourselves athletically. Uh, when we come back, when you come back, uh, we will be in the gym and, and do a lot uh, together. Uh, myself and Haas have worked hard to make sure we have the certifications to do that. Um, and we will make sure athletically uh, we do not get bullied. I think some games we do, that will not happen. Okay, uh, number two, we want to raise the standard of what it means to be a team together. I think naturally you guys do this very, very well. I'm grateful for guys. I know we spoke about Omar. Uh, we can speak about the four guys that we put in the leadership positions that do this well, uh, that have a greater buy-in to what we're doing together. Uh, we will spend more time together and uh, maybe the girlfriends won't like that as much, but uh, we'll spend more time together, okay? Um, and then the last thing is, uh, we want to raise the standard of, of what it means to be a winner. I think in, in some 
areas of competition, we are so close. We draw, we lose by one, we do other things, but we're going to raise the standard of what it means to compete and to win. So we're going to do that in every area, uh, whether that's in the weight room. Uh, we have some, I have some very fun ideas of, of what that will look like, uh, whether that means in uh, the training session, uh, what that will look like. Um, we want to, to build uh, through this game the life skills to be able to go out and, and experience success, experience improvement, uh, experience life change, uh, again, through the discipline that we have, which is the game of soccer. So again, I appreciate you guys uh, coming along with us for this ride. Um, these are moments and memories that I cherish, and I think I'm so lucky uh, to be able to live this with you every year. Um, I hope the rest of my life I get to live this with a team. Um, but I hope you for yourself as well cherish these moments together um, because they are, they are fleeting. Um, so again, the disappointment that we have uh, this season should fuel uh, what we do next. Okay, uh, I'm going to close in prayer, and then again, you guys can hang around, uh, do whatever we may put as well as videos on if you want to, to watch. Uh, feel free to take photos here, uh, whatever it might be. But uh, I'll pray and then uh, we, will, we will go. Uh, Lord, thank you for each and every uh, member of this community, uh, the players, the staff, the uh, support systems that each of these guys have. Um, we pray that uh, you would continue to um, allow this program to be a place where, where young men are sharpened to be uh, better versions of themselves on the field, yes, um, but as members of, of communities, as members of families, and um, as they walk into their careers. We pray that uh, you would give myself, uh, Coach Haas, um, and the rest of the staff guidance as we uh, create new initiatives, as we sign players, as we um, continue to, to work uh, to bring you glory for, through this program. Uh, we pray for each of these guys in their uh, final exams, that they would uh, work hard, that they would find the energy to, to finish well, uh, and that you would allow each of us to reflect well on, on the season and in the ways that you have taught us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Thank you, guys. Have a great night. Thank you so much for uh, taking time out of your day to watch our uh, videos and for supporting us this season. It means a lot to have your viewership and just constant support, and we hope next season we can uh, continue to improve and achieve great things. Uh, yeah, so everybody, thank you guys for watching like all the videos, uh, following us on Instagram and everything. All your support means so much to us. Uh, even sometimes you can be here at the field, uh, even online and through social media. We always like look at the comments and all the encouragement from you guys means a lot to us. As we keep moving forward into the next year, and uh, you know, we just ask that you keep supporting us and our future new players, uh, recruits, and everything. We want to uh, want to expose not just. Uh, the program but also the school and again we're so proud uh, and we're so thankful for everyone that's involved the coaches the staff and obviously our players and yeah we're so happy and thank you guys so much and we we hope that uh, we can uh, you can have more support in the future for you guys yeah I just uh, say thank you to, to all the support you you have been uh, uh, giving us during the season for watching all the videos for being on the on the field for like uh, being there for us and uh, we we expect a, a better season next uh, next year and uh, just uh, good things for the future. Thank you. All right, thank you all for uh, subscribing and watching uh, our season. Uh, it's great to have the ability to share uh, the life of the program, and we're really grateful for each of you for uh, your viewership, your following along. Uh, we're really grateful to Joao uh, for all of his work and dedication to put this together, um, and we're so pleased with the, the result. Again, to be able to share to have to document these moments is a huge deal and uh, we're very grateful uh, to be able to share that with each of you so uh, thank you all so much